So, uh, welcome. I'm gonna, today I'm going to talk about uh, what's Jetpack Compose in a brief and how that's going to affect our lives as an Android developers moving forward. Uh, first, just a small thing on who I am. I am Etre Tahiri. Um, currently a team lead at Frockton in, in Pristina. And I've been building Android apps for uh, quite a long time. Uh, so about two years, I'm gonna tell you a story initially just to uh, set the stage. About two years ago, I started, I, Flutter was the hot thing since I already missed the React Native train. I wanted to hop on that one. And when I started uh, learning Flutter, it was quite a different approach on building UI, and it was kind of hard to get the grasp of it from someone who has been writing XML files to show UI for a long time. And as everybody knows, uh, us as Android developers, we kind of hate changes whenever <laughs> they come, and we are kind of quite hard to adopt. So, uh, but once I got the glimpse of it on how it works, Flutter, the all declarative UI stuff, it was kind of lame to go back to writing XMLs. So I was kind of jealous, even though I had to, to write XMLs for my days. So what is the Jetpack Compose? Jetpack Compose is a new toolkit that allows us to write UI on Android uh, in a more declarative way. So up until res uh, recently, we've been writing imp imperative, which is kind of the XMLs that we have already. So uh, there's quite a big difference on the approach you take towards the uh, how you show stuff. This is uh, what a what a UI will look like on using Compose. So basically, er everything in Compose is a composable function that takes data and emits UI. And in order to change those data, you have to expose it, all those functions to uh, new data. And everything lives in a, in a view state. And whenever you wanna interact with uh, view, you have to emit an event which is gonna, gonna change some data and that's gonna update your widget. Uh, so basically, whenever we change something, we're gonna, we gonna recreate the whole screen. <laughs> and from our old way of writing code, the concept like this would be like kind of bad since it's like m too memory expensive and stuff, but uh, Compose comes with intelligent recreating of all the components, which updates all only the necessary ones that need to be updated. Uh, up until this point, we had something like this similar, so all the UI was based on a tree of widgets, and in order to have access and update them, it was uh, we had to fully depend on functions like find view by ID and then use getters and setters to change its properties and update them when it's needed. Uh, what this does to compare to declarative UI is having a UI that's uh, out of sync with all the data that we currently have. It's kind of kind of easy to uh, to happen, which now we don't have to really care about. And uh, I think it's gonna help us a lot with min uh, minimizing bugs on the UI layer. So there, there has been a push on writing native code on Android for the past two years to come as close to declarative UI as possible without having Jetpack Compose, for example. And how we did that was using data binding where we kind of injected a view model, which used to, uh, it's used as our view state that has some live data, and whenever we change that live data, the whole UI uh, gets notified and everything 
acts similar to what we have right now. But uh, using data binding comes with a, lo uh, with a lot of cost. First of all, it, uh, it is notoriously hard to debug. So whenever you have to debug something, it's kind of a nightmare. And reusability takes a big hit since you have to kind of rely on uh, always supplying the same data. Uh, and the, the last but my favorite, uh, data binding adds a ton of build time, which is something everybody hates, I assume. <laughs> Uh, so, uh, this is an example of a project that the previous uh, example was taken from. So, what we had was a combination of data binding with live data to show everything. So, basically, not, not the find view by ID was anywhere in the project and we completely depended on that. And we had the build time, which is four minutes. Take note, this is run on the M1 Pro, which is supposed to demolish build times. And, but yet, it's kind of hard. Working on uh, big scale projects and that have code base older than 10 years, uh, just the fact of you wanted to make changes this big, uh, there's a lot of skepticism around it, so it's kind of hard to just convince someone that, yeah, we should start doing stuff like this. And uh, which is something I wanted to take, take a deeper dive on to see how it's going to affect us. So the following are, uh, these are two, two apps that are uh, posted by Google, which is in the forefront of all this train. And uh, what, does, what this shows is just how implementing Compose is gonna, it's gonna affect our build times. So uh, this is uh, in comparison before and after a project that has been fully migrated into Compose. So before we had like 115 mil uh, seconds to build everything. And after that, uh, we, we take off like 30% uh, from it. Uh, one thing that's important is everybody who has been working on projects on Android that have a lot of J Java code and are kind of migrated to Kotlin, seeing 10, 20 minute build times, it's kind of common. And if I can make something to a reach where I can take off like 30% out of it, I'll take that chance every day, twice on Sunday. But when you work on big projects, it's kind of hard to just like put everything on hold and uh, try to just migrate everything to Compose and get back to developing your product since that doesn't work, especially with big projects. So the other example is that compares the project which is, uh, which only adds Compose as a dependency and only uses it to show lists, which kind of tells how it's going to look like whenever we st the migration process is going to look like, which is in most cases going to take at least a year if you have like a big fully fledged project. And the only gain on the build time is around three to four seconds, which is something that uh, not, it's not that bad and should not be as a stopping, a stopping thing for us to just start the migration process or at least write everything new that we're gonna build within our projects using Compose. Everybody knows that writing Compose, we're not gonna see XML files anymore, so for that I'm quite thankful for. And uh, the following is a diff uh, shows on how this is gonna affect our codes offline. And I know this is not a, not a spec that shows a lot on uh, how good or bad the framework is, but I think writing less code is gonna give us a better velocity on development, which I think it's a good thing. Uh, so this is an example of showing a bare bones list and there's quite a few lines of code missing, but 
this is what we have to write for it, just to show a uh, simple list. And this is what it's gonna look like now with Compose, which I think is quite a big difference. Uh, in terms of um, lines of code, I think it's gonna be like uh, a lot less since uh, we're gonna see around 70% less XML code, which is kinda nice. And it's all gonna be Kotlin, and that's gonna be good. How about the APK size? Uh, so, one of the two, uh, two biggest libraries that we have on our APKs are App Compact and uh, the Material Components which add for a lot, of, uh, a lot of size within our APK files. So uh, removing those is just gonna be uh, like quite a significant drop and also we're not gonna have like uh, annotation processors and capped, uh, capped functions anymore which is gonna be a lot less. And uh, this is going back to the same so the same example as before, a project that's been fully migrated and one that's, that's still in development. Uh, what, so what do we see here is, so we lose like kind of around 40% of the APK size once we are fully migrated and that goes to just only the uh, removing the core libraries of Android, App Compact and Material Components. And uh, the other example shows what it's gonna look like whenever uh, we add Compose to our project, which adds some size to our APK files, but it's not that much, and I think it's something, uh, something that everybody can live with for, for a transition period, which is uh, gonna be kinda small. And uh, that's something, uh, that's pretty much my talk. Uh, as a conclusion, I think uh, Compose is it's a nice, th nice, nice thing, and with the, all the with all the skepticism that's that's around it, either we should move or not into it. I think uh, this data. I uh, hopefully someone will 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 take notice that it's not that big of a change and we only gain from it in terms of how our day-to-day -day operations is gonna look like. And that's pretty much it. Thank you. So questions, anyone? And we're running out of t-shirts, so like. Yeah, uh, so my question is, uh, because the Compose is uh, quite new, uh, how it's easy for you to build the design that the, the designers provide to you? Because uh, with the XML, we were uh, able to, we, we know the hacks, how to implement some stuff, but with Compose, uh, you need to uh, get uh, too deeply inside the components to, to develop it and to look pretty the same as the designers uh, wrote you. So I, I think my opinion is that you might uh, stuck in some uh, components during the designing them. So how, how was your impression for, for this during the creation? So the hardest thing for us, uh, we are in the process of migrating a project and we started another one from scratch. So building UI uh, with Compose, in my opinion, is it's easier since uh, since everything is a composable uh, composable function, which em emphasizes reusability a lot. It, it just took us a little bit of time to just uh, switch our mindset to the declarative paradigm, and from then on, it was kind of easier. And ha theming and animation and everything else, it's kind of easier. So I. I uh, think the only barrier is uh, the components itself. So the libraries are not that, uh, are there's not a lot of uh, use cases out there, which is a little bit of a limitation, but other than that, I think it's 
way easier and faster to build UI using Compose than using XML, for XML that what we have been doing so far. Out, uh, inside the box with uh, some state management solution with the library? Yeah. Uh, not right now. Uh, we, we use, most of us depend on view models to, uh, to act as our uh, state management tools. But if you need to share state between components that are not uh, close yeah, to each other? Yeah, it has a view state, but uh, we, I have not explored it that much. But from, for now, we fully depend on view models to act as our state managers. Uh, so my question is, since you also worked on Flutter, uh, do you think that uh, with Jetpack Compose they perfected the declarative UI, or is, it, is there something lacking? I think Flutter, in that sense, is a bit ahead uh, since uh, the community is bigger and there's a lot, of, a lot more components available to you out of the box using fl uh, components, where in Compose, anything that's not material design, you got to build it from scratch. Thanks. All right. Anybody else? Okay, so please, a round of applause for it.